Hello again and thanks for joining me here at soundopic.com in our series of Pro Tools tutorials. My name is Anthony Zeller and uh, today's topic we're going to talk about uh, the usefulness of modifier keys uh, when building a session or manipulating a session. Uh, when I say modifier keys I mean uh, the shift key, the control, the option, and the apple key or any combination of the four actually depending on what you're doing and uh, I'll give you some straightforward examples of that right off the bat. Um, the best one I can think of is when you want to change input or output routing of either your entire session, uh, parts of your entire session, or uh, just distinct uh, subgroups within that section. Uh, I'll get to the specifics here. Uh, let's start with making, let's just say 10 new tracks just for fun. So I'll hold down Shift Apple, excuse me, Shift Apple N. Uh, create 10 new tracks here, just type that in. I'm going to switch to the mix window now just for ease. And uh, I'm going to use the first modifier here on our list option just to null everything out. I'm going to hold down option, get rid of the inputs and outputs. Now as you can see, uh, holding down the option key, holding down the option key uh, affects everything in the session. If you had 100 tracks in this session and you held down the option key and, and held down no input, all 100 tracks would switch to no input. The same is true of outputs, so that can be very useful or, or very destructive considering you can't uh, undo any of those. Keep that in mind. Um, but let's talk about that. Obviously, Option does everything. Um, if you hold down Option and Apple, uh, it uh, Option means everything, Apple means sequentially. So uh, if, for instance, you click on this first track and you would like the first track's input to be 1 and you're holding down the Option and Apple keys, they will become sequential inputs, 1 through 10. In this case, I only have 10 tracks, but it would go as far as it could go, and then it would start over again based on your I.O. setup here. So since I only have 16 inputs, uh, I've only gone as far as 10, but I could make 7 more, for instance. And if I switched everybody to no input, no output, you will see that Option Shift creates 16 tracks and then starts back over at 1. Obviously, same would be true of the outputs. And keep in mind you can select uh, stereo outputs too. It'll just uh, you'll use up your outputs faster, obviously. It'll begin uh, 1 through 16 in stereo, 1 through 16 in stereo, and then 1 and 2 again. So the order is still the same, uh, regardless of whether you're using mono or stereo tracks. Uh, but option will make them like track. So if you select one and two as your first output, then it will continue to make stereo outputs for all of the other tracks, as you've seen. Now there's a variant on that. If you uh, want to confine things to a selected group, not to be mistaken with a hard group here, but let's just say that one through ten here are my, my drum tracks. Kick, snare, hat, toms, overheads, and room mics, for instance, stereo rooms. Now, uh, if I hold down the Shift key, Shift means that any any modifier at this point that I use will be confined to a selected group. In this case, tracks 1 through 10, so that is my selected group. If I hold down Shift and uh, Option, for instance, that will mean uh, within the selected group I would like all tracks to be, in this case, Interface 1. You'll see that they all switch to 1. If I change the modifiers and hold down Option and Apple, as you saw before, it will start with one and go through the list as far as it can go based on the confinement of that group, in this case one through ten. And uh, let's just say that I'm monitoring through a console or something and I'll make my outputs for that same selected group one through ten. Fairly useful. Now let's say that my, uh, my audio tracks 11 through 17 are going to be uh, guitar overdubs and uh, I would like them all to be on a single mono input. So uh, let's just say for sake of argument we will use input 11. I'll hold down shift to confine it to the group option to make them all the same and scroll down to input 11. You'll see that they all switch to 11. If you were monitoring out a console and you wanted these to show up as individual channel faders then you would hold down shift to confine it to the group option to be all and apple and you would select for instance 11 and you'd go 11 to 16, well I don't have a 17th output so that's not very useful. The likelihood is you'd probably set them all to the same, so uh, shift and option would be, would be sufficient here. 
So you'll see that uh, now I can have all these discrete 1 through 10, and then these next tracks can be 11 through 17. We'll all go out output 11. Now, uh, you know, if I add another couple tracks for bass, for instance, I need all those to be 12. Notice it defaults to highlighting the two new tracks. Hold down Shift and Option. Set it to 12. They're both 12. Set the outputs to 12. They're both 12. And so on. And these modifier keys actually work uh, uh, for other things as well. If you, for instance, select tracks 1 through 10 and you don't have them hard grouped together, um, then you can hold down uh, Shift and Option and Mute, and it will mute all of those tracks. Hold down Shift to remove them, from, remove the highlight, and uh, hit Mute again. You'll see that it will only mute the tracks that are highlighted, for instance. Um, if you had, for instance, a plug-in, a uh, simple plug-in here as an insert, uh, all across the A inserts of many of these tracks, and uh, let's say you got this session from somewhere else, and, and someone else rather, and you didn't have this EQ in your particular Pro Tools system, and uh, it was just sitting there telling you that it was inactive and you didn't want to see it anymore. Uh, holding down the, uh, well, here's a better example, holding down the Option and Shift, since I'm confining it to this group, let's say I didn't want the EQ on these anymore. So now that I'm holding on Option and Shift, if I click No Insert, oh, look, those all went away. So the same rules apply to inserts, and mutes, and whatever, and solos, and, and many, other fact, uh, many other factors that affect the tracks. Um, there's only one other thing I want to show you here before we wrap up. Um, let's say, for instance, uh, as I mentioned, this is my these are my drums. So Apple G, I'm going to make a hard group, uh, a mix and edit group for these guys. I'm just going to call it drums. Now you'll notice that when something is grouped together, if you change the track size, for instance, everybody changes. Um, these modifier keys can be used to, to some extent here too. Let's say that uh, you know I'm going along and and my drum tracks are tracking nicely, but you know I, I'm done now. I want to go in and uh, let's just say I want to edit the kick drum by itself. It's kind of small. I don't want to go through the trouble of having to go down here and click on drums and you know ungroup them check out where my kick is, go in and adjust some things because the timing is wrong. Let's just say I don't want to do that. Well, modifier keys can be used for resizing tracks, too. If I hold down Option, this will affect everybody regardless of group. Option made everybody jumbo in this case. Or if I hold down Option, I can make everybody micro in this case. But uh, let's say I want my group is off here, and I want, eh, let's just say 1 through 12. I want to change the size, so if I hold down Shift and Option, I can make all of those small. And the rest of them will say micro, for instance. Um, if I have all of my tracks grouped, or my, excuse me, if I have my groups active, uh, and I want to resize everybody, let's just say to medium here, um, but I know my overheads and my rooms, I don't need to see them up quite as large, um, but within a group, while the group is active, if you hold down the control key, it kind of works as a negative. You can uh, click on something and make it micro, and it will basically remove it from the group in terms of this particular setting. Uh, you can say control click on these guys. I made them all small. My, my group's still on, so even if I just click on this guy and hit medium, which it's already on, you'll see that tracks 7, 8, 9, and 10 will jump up to medium size again. So control can be used as a modifier basically to, to um, as a momentary switch to uh, remove something from a group, for instance. But uh, that's it in a nutshell. Um, you can experiment around using the principles I've just told you. Yeah, Option does everybody. Option and Apple does everybody in order. Apple, app, <laughs> option, Apple, and Shift, which is a tongue twister, uh, will do everybody and confine it to a selected group. So uh, those can be really useful when you're modifying sessions. And uh, hope you found this uh, tutorial interesting. I'll be uh, coming back with uh, uh, some more useful tips and tricks, so stay tuned here at soundopted.com or uh, on YouTube, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.